Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm here for another video and this video has, uh, is the first of a new series that I want to start today, which will be called Pen Genetics. And in these videos I will try to approach the question of pens being inspired by imitations of clones, everything like that, I think it may be interesting. I have to say that I don't think that in pens that there is such a wide um, freedom of having different pens because pens actually are like a stick that writes, so I don't think there is that much variation, so there will be lots of similar stuff, even though they are not inspired by each other. However, today I want to start addressing these kind of issues in these first pen genetics videos. And in this video, I will talk about two very nice pens that I really think they have, they share many characteristics and I am talking about the Caveco Dia 2, which is a current model of Caveco and the Parker International Duofold, which is almost a current version of uh, Parker, the today, nowadays, the most modern version has a wider cap band, but it is the same pen with maybe a difference here in the cap band and also on the, on the logo on top and the engraving on the nib, but the pen actually is the same. So, these are two pens that I think they have some similar characteristics and we will start with that. First, let me just show you, this is the Caveco Dia 2 in the black version with chrome uh, trim, there is also a black version with gold trim and there is the amber version which is very, very beautiful, but I don't have that one. So this one has a Caveco logo on top of the cap, it has the clip that says Caveco, cap bands and so on, and then we have this number five, this number five autofocus, no, it's focus, nib, that is made of steel, and we open this and it has no cartridge inside, I thought there was an empty cartridge here, sometimes I change stuff from one pen to another, and so this is it. The, this is a pen from, that was uh, launched in, I think, 2011. The other pen that I'm showing you is this pen. This is a Parker International to fold, as I told you. It has also the logo there, the typical Parker arrow-shaped clip, cap bands, and then you have a two-toned gold nib. And then inside it is a cartridge converter pen, this one has a converter inside, I could have a converter there but I forgot to check it. So here we have two interesting pens in my opinion. This kind of model is, as I told you, is almost a current one uh, with slight differences but this version was uh, created around 1996. This is a pen from the United Kingdom, this is a pen from Germany. So now let's just take an overall look to these pens and what we have here. We have, in both pens, we have a logo on the top. This one is the logo from Caveco, this one is the logo from the Duofold model. It's Nowadays it changed, it is an ace of spades, but at the time it was this dual fold banner which was vintage inspired. Then we have clips that are mounted in these on this ring. So we have a chrome ring, chrome clip. This one has a knurled surface on the top, this one doesn't. Then you have the caveco written here on the nib on the clip. In this one you have just, you don't have Parker, but you have the arrow that is distinctive for Parker. On the other side, you can see here Caveco Dia Germany 
and in Parker there is no in print. Then you have a two uh, a twin ring uh, twin rings on the cap, so two rings for each cap, then the cap continues after those two rings. The clip on Parker goes a little lower than the clip on Caveco. Then you have a barrel that is quite straight on Parker and then it tapers down here. The, the barrel on Caveco uh, it starts tapering around here but it's not that visible. Then you have uh, another chrome color ring and you have this thing which could look like a blind cap but it's not, it's just a piece fixed and this could also look like a blind cap but it's not, it's also a fixed part. On the end, on the Parker you don't have anything and on the Caveco you have the logo, the same logo that is on the cap. But when you look at those pens they are of the same size and they have the same amount of rings, the same kind of cap ending and they are very similar in my opinion. Then we can unscrew the pens and we'll see that we have very similar shaped sections. This one tapers down a little bit more and then tapers out more than these. It is more hourglass shaped and that one has that kind of lip. Both have these thing that many people hate because it can get a little bit corroded or oxidized, this uh, ring on the section. The section is of the same size, they both are screw fit caps, the threads on the dual fold are much bigger than the DIA, the DIA 2. Then you have a chrome ring there at the exactly same, same place and when you unscrew, as I showed you before, both have Uh, metal threads, metal threads that go into the barrel. And then for the last, but they both have the same filling system and the nib on Parker is a little bit bigger and it is gold. The prices between both are very different and the Parker will cost more than 300 euros and this will cost around 100 so this is kind of three times more the price of the Caveco and maybe you can uh, justify that price difference for the type of nib being gold if you decided to change the steel nib that just unscrews and you can put another one here uh, if you went for a gold nib you would have one around 150 euros plus I think that's kind of the price so they would be very similar in price. Now these are the characteristics. Given the characteristics and given the way people nowadays speak about copies and stuff on maybe more on social media it is easier to th it is not easier it is easy to think that these two pens are kind of a copy of each other because Parker is well known more widely spread maybe you can think that the Caveco D2 is a copy of Parker and you can really see they are very similar they have lots of similar stuff they have also some different stuff which I told you the logo on the end of the barrel of the Caveco the nib of the Caveco is smaller and still and the threads of the section are metal that go into acrylic on the on the resin on the Parker and they are metal on the Caveco that go into metal of the DIA. Okay, so if we showed these pens to many people, some people would say they are not copies of each other, but I guess many of them would say yes they are clearly inspired they are clearly inspired by each other however there is a slightly twist to this history in my opinion this is my opinion i'm 
this is really my opinion although i can i am trying to do this as objectively as as i can like a genetic test in my own head it's out of my own head it's not uh, i'm not and i cannot be sure that i'm being accurate in all details but one thing that i was uh, as i was telling you one thing that i like in both these pens is that both are vintage inspired by pens from their own brands and we have here two of them we have here the parker dq which is kind of a parker dofold but i chose this one because it's it is more similar in size to the international dofold this is a pen if i'm not mistaken that was started to that started to be produced around uh, let me check my notes 1924 and you can see it's quite similar it has gold uh, you can see the, the gold band here you can see the clip with the ball so we can see how this one with flat top this transition into this one I think we can clearly see that and then the Dia also came from a vintage model from the 1930s I guess they started being made in 1934. The Dia I have here to show you is a Caveco Dia. It's there. But it is model 83, which is a smaller model. So it's not really, really that equivalent. But imagine it was made in several sizes. So there was a bigger size that would be almost equivalent to that. And if you look at the Dia, you can clearly see that this newer deer is very very similar to that one up to almost the smallest details because the clip is the same both have the logo of Caveco on top both have this clip it's named Caveco uh, twin bands on cap then this one has a ring this one doesn't this one has the logo this one doesn't and they have both the knurled parts there and it has the knurled part because you would take this blind cap out this is not a blind cap it's just for aesthetical motives and then you have the piston turning knob inside because this was a piston filler and then when we uncap the pen you will see that they are very similar this one has an ink window i'm not sure you can see the transparency here in this part this one has an ink window no ring but this doesn't screw also because it was a piston filler one has gold nib this one has steel nib and the nib in this one is a little smaller and there was no ring that kind of uh, static that we go for nowadays that wasn't that searched for before when we look at the the dq in the relationship with the dofold we can see both are roughly flat tops this one has the logo there the older one didn't but it said parker on the clip which had a ball but then at that time parker didn't have the arrow clip yet it also had that knurled part as the vintage and the newer Kavec has then it had only one uh, cap band but there were models with two cap bands the hard rubber was a chased one you can see it had these lines this one is celluloid this one is uh, hard rubber there was the logo there Parker DQ whoops I would like to show that to you but I don't think I can it's not easy to light that okay I think you can see the lucky curve and so on this one has this kind of blind cap with a ring this one has kind of a blind cap but with no ring and this blind cap was a real one because it had a button and this pen is a button filler so you can depress this and I guess the rubber sack is now dead I need to replace that because this is a pen that I really enjoy and I fixed it before, so some years ago, so I think it needs a new sack because it doesn't move and really doesn't move at all, so you can check that. 
And then you have the section that is different from the section on the regular do fold. But you can see it has this bulge there that is one comes from the other. And this one has the nib. Very nice nib that I'm not sure if it is a gold nib. It says Parker, as this one says, doesn't have the arrow because there was no arrow and one has the ebonite feed, the other one has a plastic feed. This one is a button filler pen and I'm quite sad it doesn't work anymore because I was thinking about inking this pen, but I need to deal with that soon. And so you can see that both are evolutions from that pen. Nowadays Kavec only has a cartridge converter pens, so it makes sense. Nowadays, Kavec only has cartridge uh, converter pens and that makes sense also in, kind, in terms of evolution. So this one is not like that one. We know that Kavec will introduce piston uh, filler pens soon, but they didn't. So they are kind of an evolution. And when we look at those together, yes, they look the same pen, in many of the aspects, but if we take them out and we just look to their predecessors, we can clearly see that when this one evolved into this one and that one into this one, but they are not similar at all. They have different filling systems, they have different designs with the Caveco de being more, a more rounded pen, uh, as you can see, even the clip is more rounded, the, the Parker was more straight in every uh, matter of it. So, I would say that in terms of the verdict of this video, in terms of pen genetic, this pen was not, the, these pens are not related. They are not a copy of each other even though they may seem similar, but when you look at the older versions, they are not. And if we looked at the older version, and I will insert a photo here that was provided me by a, a, a Caveco collector friend. The first version of the Caveco Dia is even more different than this one. So, you can see there are no relation on the vintage, the newer are vintage inspired. So, going back again and to finish this video, I would say this is a different case and sometimes we think people are imitating each other, but there are some kinds, and, and you can see this in biology and evolution. There is one kind of evolution that is called converging evolution. And that's what I think happened here. They, both pens came from very different ancestors. These have nothing to do between themselves. But then, evolving through the years with many iterations of each pen, they reached the same time for, for the same target audience in very similar pens, but they came from different origins. So, one didn't come after the other to copy the other, but they really uh, were a converging evolution. They started apart from each other and then they converged in similar models. So, this is my first pen genetics video. I think this may be interesting, I'll try to compare more pens in these fewer details, try to provide some historical background if that makes sense, and try to do this more often. Because sometimes we need to think a little bit more than we sometimes do. Things are not just what they seem to be, sometimes there is more to them, sometimes there is history to them, and this is the case. So, converging, Evolution is my verdict. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to meet you here soon. So, see you next time. Bye.